In this review, we are going to discuss about the how to earn back or gain back the lost QA respect. Probably in, the, in your team, you have seen that QA people are not given very much respect, right? And so in this video, I'm going to discuss about the four principles that definitely can help you to gain back the lost QA respect that you probably have in your team. As well as I'm going to talk about some of the mistakes that QA people are doing right now and that they should stop immediately to gain back the lost respect that they have all right so let's jump into the video and see what are these four principles and what are the different things that i would like to highlight right so let's jump back all right so first of all uh guys before starting out let me make myself a little smaller for you so that uh, you guys can understand what's going on uh, if you are someone who is new to the channel, I would highly recommend if you are interested in learning automation, if you want to become a better QA, I have a list of three or four challenges which, which are basically 30 days of automation challenge, Selenium, Postman, Rest Assured as well as Karate. So make sure you check out the playlist. Uh, the link is sd.live slash 30 days. You can go to this link and definitely check out, right? So that was it. And let's move on to the four principle that can help you to earn back the lowest Q respect, right? So first of all, let me give you very, uh, so first of all, the first principle says that you have to be informative. What do you mean by this promote? What do you mean by this? I am, I have to be informative, right? So I mean to say that uh, whenever, if you are a QA for a particular project, for example, it can be a small web application that you are, or a, it can be a small project that you are basically uh, handle, right? Throughout the journey, right? Probably you guys are following, most of the time uh, people are following sprints and you are the QA responsible, main QA responsible for it. So I will request that you should become the subject matter expert. So first point is basically becoming informative by becoming a subject matter expert. You can share your knowledge with some other people. For example, if you have any kind of a pro uh, point that you would like to highlight, if you have any kind of a information that you would like to highlight to PMs, discuss with them and discuss with the use cases that probably can become a bug in the future, right? So that's how you have to be more informative in nature, right? You have to become an active listener. You should have a context what's going on live. So this is probably one of the important thing that I have seen that as a QA people, they don't know what is going live, right? If you are a person who's basically uh, responsible for the product, right? And if you don't know what is going live, man, you are making a very big mistake. So that's why I have, I have, I am giving more uh, point to, to this. If the first principle is that you have to be informative in nature, right? So be become a active listener basically means whatever whenever PM, PMs are basically giving you handoff about the requirements or the features, whatever they're discussing, note down whatever the things they're talking about and ask the question. If you disagree with them, directly ask the question. That's how you become informa informative. And this is one of the things that I have used personally. Trust me, it works very well. So becomes SME, which is subject matter expert. You should know what is going live. You have to know what is going live become active listener ask silly questions because silly questions can uh, help uh, the silly or dumb bugs in the production right so that's what you can do so QA uh, QA people basically gain the respect by providing QA testing is worth uh, worthwhile to the customer company right so basically this quote basically say that uh, if you are providing value then only uh, they are given you are given more respect regarding that thing right so make sure you follow the first principle. So let's quickly jump to the uh, second principle, which is basically trustworthy. This is where I have seen people are lots of lagging, where they don't take the responsibility. For example, uh, there's a particular project or particular feature is going live. So they don't take the end-to-end -end functionality. So they just do what did exactly I have seen people is they are just, uh, they just tested it and they have opened the bug. That's it. And there's they don't share the update with the stakeholder. They don't uh, basically present what is p0 p1 or p2 in the uh, testing that they have done they don't basically basically communicate what they have done to the stakeholders so that's why people don't trust them right so that's what i have seen people so you have to take on ship you tell the, you can what you can do i have personally done is that uh, if you are using slack or any kind of uh, messaging you can basically uh, put the put everything that you have basically done 
uh, whatever the testing that you have done you can uh, put the status in the slack channel tag the respective people tag the stakeholders right and let them know if you can email them that's very important thing so i think you can email them message them right whatever whatever you are uh, comfortable with right so you can tell them right these are the timelines these are the p0 p1 and stick to it right uh, even you are against the timeline make sure you again make sure p0s or blunder mistakes are not going live and it's okay to disagree i have seen people who are basically just agree with the whatever the pm says or developer says don't do that guys don't do that trust me i have more than plus 8 8 plus years experience if you are if you disagree with the point you just say that i am disagree but the last call is not yours so you are not a gatekeeper for the project gate you have you are basically telling them that uh, these are the things are which are p0 p1 and p2s i have executed them and now it's your call if you want to release or not so that's their call right so trustworthy make sure you are a trustworthy that's how you will gain the respect right so let's jump on into the third point so make sure you pay attention which is basically asking the right question which is basically a uh, point for the adding value asking the right question basically mean that there's no su such a thing as stupid question right you can ask any stupid question right for example what will happen if user do this what is why there's a color is not there how you are making these kind of requirements right these are the things or these are the questions let me make it so these are the question that you can definitely ask and i've seen people are not asking question and they just assume it and what's what's happening is that in the end when the uh, pro the project is released to production and the, um, then there is a particular bug right because they have assumed it right so don't assume ask the right question make sure you ask them stretch your abilities it basically means that always learning attitude right keep on learning help them to reduce the test cases right so that your regressions you would have a maximum coverage it basically means uh, you have to work smartly and uh, by adding value it basically means you have to keep your test cases limited so that uh, the testing that you want to do and you don't uh, basically hinder the timelines of the pms and stakeholders right so you don't have to be gatekeeper that i have discussed with uh, in the second point also make sure you present your p0 or whatever the testing that you have done within the timelines and tell them that okay if i am taking one more day i am helping or i am doing this type of testing so they will understand and probably will help you also right so that's our other thing so fourth principle i think this is one of the important thing which is focused you have to pay attention to your work environment right make sure uh, you communicate with the uh, with developer very well you make sure uh, one of the things i have uh, seen is that uh, there is a concept which is called as i would say uh, not to disagree with the developer so basically whatever developer says you just agree with him and this is how uh, the bugs basically get leaked so in my opinion qa dev they can be very good friends but whenever if it is uh, things about the bugs if it is things about the uh, issues they are not friends so make sure you are testing by keeping in mind that there is already a certain bugs and i have to find that bugs and i have to file them so i have seen people don't file the bugs because they are uh, they have a, they have a good relationship with the developer and that's how developer you have a minimum bugs and you basically don't add it to jira and nobody knows if they, it was a bug and the developer quickly fix it and you you are both are happy but trust me it is very 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 uh negative value for you as a qa you are a person who is responsible for the quality first person so make sure you add the jiras every time you found some information right even if it's a invalid bug it's okay right but trust me while the bugs don't become a friend of with the developer right you can be a friend uh, with uh, i mean apart from the work but uh, whenever it comes to the uh, project releasing and the bugs you are not friend trust me i have seen this people right so kts make sure you give kts and have your clear expectation with the pms and developer that these are the things these are the bugs are there and i have shared with you right to the point report i think this is one of the important thing and trust me personally i have used it make sure you send the uh report to the stakeholders make sure you tag them let them know even if they are not asking let them know that you have executed or done this type of testing and these are the bugs open bugs these are the things that you have done and this is, this is the time it they will it will take to test particular project so make sure you let them right that's one of the thing so let, let's quickly talk about the mistakes and uh, pay attention guys these are the my personal uh things 
uh, basically what are the mistakes that you are making and you are losing respect as a qa right so because you are you are a person who basically love to relax and you don't take ownership and this is one of the important thing if you are doing it trust me you are losing the respect so make sure you take ownership and don't re- take relax relaxation is important but to re- relax whenever there is a particular time right not providing value to the team it basically means you are not a sme you don't know what's going on live you don't take responsibilities so that's how you are not providing the value to the team you can pro- asking right question is actually adding the value right i have discussed in the in the principle right so make sure you do that wrong estimates if you do give bad estimates or wrong estimates so let me tell you very uh, important scenario so there was a particular testing uh, that we have to do for a web application it was a simple form kind of a thing and one of the testers say that okay it contains multiple uh, fields like input fields and it will take around 5 days to do the testing and i said wow and this so what happens what happens is that basically pms developers have uh, these thing in the mind that this uh, qa uh, always give the wrong estimates because uh, he, d- he don't know how to do it properly and uh, when the project came to me i have given them okay i will do these four type of testing this will take around 1 uh, and a half day these are the test cases that i have written and basically properly documented thing then they uh, they basically got to know that okay these are the things they have to do so uh, i mean eventually i got some respect out of it but my point here is that don't become that person who basically give the wrong estimates if you don't know the estimates just tell them i'm not sure about it i'll get back to you after some time so and you can come back after certain time with the correct estimates or i would suggest if you have some estimates in your mind discuss with your peer or your manager and let them know that i'll basically i am asking for 3 days time or 2 days time by taking some buffer they will be happy to give you that thing but don't give wrong estimates blame game this is one of the important thing i have seen in the people qa people lose respect because of the blame game so they are basically saying i don't know what's going on live developer have made a mistake so that's why bug is released don't do that don't do that take responsibility if there is a particular bug in the production make sure you get it fixed uh, trust me i have seen very very rare chances when a, where qa people are getting fired due to the production bugs i have seen very very rare chance especially i have seen uh, the chances in the consultancy like uh, this company like consultancy for example essential in process like this but if you are in product based company i have not seen people getting uh, uh, getting their fired or something like this or uh, bad happened to them because of the leakage in the production but if there is a leakage or bug leak make sure you take ownership take full responsibility add the cases automate it and take responsibility so everything you can do that okay assume requirement don't assume any kind of requirement ask pm ask developer make sure you document it get it then get them in your jira tickets okay so don't make these mistakes not exposing the abilities people don't expose their exp- abilities it basically means uh, if they are good at writing bug reports if they are good at communicating the bug right if they are uh, basically uh, they know that uh, the whatever the feature that currently we are building will have this some in some accessibility issues or some other kind of issues but pm doesn't know about it so they don't discuss it they said okay it's okay uh, what does it matter i am not the person or i am not the product manager right but this is actually the wrong attitude make sure whatever the things that you have in your mind you can discuss with the team and let them know that these are the challenges probably they will face in their whenever they will release this product right so that's all about it i think uh, this will help you a lot to earn back the lost qa respect that you have done and uh, i have created a video around the why people why qa people are not given respect about it so you can check out the uh, here uh, probably in the description right and uh, let me know if this were these points are helpful and these pins, four principle that i have personally used uh, let me know if they are helpful in your uh, in your career as a software tester all right so thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next video uh, this is your host pramod and please don't forget to subscribe like and comment down if you whatever do you feel about this video right and bye i'll see you in the next one